Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video we're gonna go over how we set up some dynamic spawning for the resources. So you know, it's not just the 5-6 pre-made trees that I've made here, but the whole island can be populated with, with trees or possibly other plants that you might also want. So let's just get right into it. First of all, I'm gonna make a new script and I'm just gonna call this one the resource spawner. Now opening this up, let's just do the very first thing of making this into a network behavior. Let's just get a list of serialized field and let's this, let this be the uh, list of network objects. Um, or sorry, network behaviors, for example, and this could be our resource prefabs. And now we're gonna set up uh, pretty much how the spawning is gonna work, right? So let's first of all, um, let's actually draw it out a bit. Let me open up paint. I know people love when I do that. And let's say that this brown circle here, that's our island. So we have our island here. And let's think about how we want the spawning to work. So one of the easiest ways to go about it is essentially we have the resource spawner. Let's just say the resource spawner is just this little black dot here. This is our resource spawner. Now what we can do is we can essentially mark a sort of box around the resource spawner, for example, like so. And within this box, we want to shoot or we want to spawn um, all the prefabs, all the resources, right? So they will be spawned within this box. And the way that we do it is we're gonna step through it. So if I zoom in here a little bit, we're going to be stepping through this box one point at a time. And so we're essentially going to be checking, do we spawn here? Do we spawn here? Do we spawn here? Do we spawn here? And so on and so forth. And it'll essentially keep doing that. And it'll keep checking, should we spawn there or not? And then, you know, next row and so on. And it'll just shoot a bunch of rays, essentially checking if do we hit the ground, which means is it even eligible for spawning? And should we spawn a resource there or not? So now with this in mind, let's first of all define the box. So let's start by doing a private vector three. And this will be, let's call it the spawn extent. Um, and this can just be some, you know, preset up uh, box. For example, let's just do something like that. And let's draw on, uh, whoops, on draw gizmo selected, which is just so we can actually draw the box out. Let's just make it a green box and we'll make the cube. So it'll be like this. Ext extents essentially means similar to radius with circles. It's half, um, which is why we're timing it by two here. So let's first of all, just make our private void spawn method. Uh, or let's do spawn resources, I guess. And this will essentially spawn, yeah, this will essentially spawn all the resources that we need. So first things first is we've got to move through essentially all of these steps. And in order to do that, we have to, you know, move from something up towards, well, the numbers here, right? But first of all, let's just go and put it in the scene just so we can see the resource spawner and we can see the extent being drawn correctly. So let me create an empty, let's call this resource spawner. Let's maybe give that, I don't know, like an orange circle as a gizmo. Let's put it at 000, throw the resource spawner onto it. And there we go. So here we have the box and we can make this a bit bigger. Let's maybe make it 25 or 25, for example. So it'll, it'll cover majority of the island here. I think that's fine. And what we essentially want now is, as I mentioned, as I drew it out before, we essentially just want to step through each of the possible positions, shoot a ray down, check if we've hit the ground. If we have hit the ground, it means we are eligible for spawning. So going back in here, um, this also means that we want some kind of layer mask. So let's do a serialized field, private layer mask, and let's have this be the ground layer, like so. All right, cool. So now stepping through it one by one, um, what we want to do is we want to track essentially what we're stepping through. So let's go, go make a for loop, which is how we can step through something. And let's just do that on the X axis. So let's do vector three dot X. Oh, whoops, not vector three, what the hell? Spawn extent dot X. And let's actually just, instead of calling this extent, let's just let this be the spawn spawn area. I think that's probably simpler. Let's not make it times two. Um, this will generally make it uh, a little more readable, I think, when we write this bit of the code. So now if we go out here, we, should, we probably want to make it 50 and 50 instead, because now it's half the size. Yeah, so we can make it uh, spawn area. Let's just do 50 and 50. I'm going to make it 10 height, something like that. And that should be fine. Again, we're pretty much back to the box that we had before. So now with this, going back into the code, we're essentially stepping through the X now. So let's do that. Now, every time that we count up, we don't just want to count up by one as we're essentially doing here. So first of all, let's have the index actually be a float. And let's, instead of calling this I, let's call it X instead of a normal for loop. So now we're essentially moving X. And we have to decipher how much do we want to move X by. And this can be a variable. So sure, let's field, private, um, and this will be a float. And this can be, for example, let's do something like spawn distance. And let's maybe make that, I don't know, let's make it 0 0.3, for example, just some value. And then we also, as it just had, we also want a spawn rate value as it had before. Let's make that, I don't know, 3. So now what we do is we plus the x with the spawn distance instead. So now it'll go up by 0 0.3 all the way up to the point where it hits whatever the x in here is set to. I think in our case, we set that to 50 
10 and 50 if I'm not wrong. Now we can also set the spawn layer. I don't think we have anything for the ground. So whoops, we can just set it to default. The default layer, I think it is just, yeah, it's just default. So now that we have this set up, now let's move through it. And we essentially want to move through both the X and the Y. So we want a for loop within a for loop, which can be a little uh, tricky. And sorry, this is not the Y, this is the set. So we want to do the spawn area dot set. So now it'll be counting up from zero to one. Now this, however, if we just add this to the position here, it, the box will actually technically be offset. So it'll be 50 over here and 50 up here. So the box would technically be here. So we have to offset it by essentially minus, well, half of the uh, size of it. So let's go and do that. So now let's set the X value. So let's do um, bar, let's just call it actual X equals to X minus, and that'll be the spawn area dot X divided by two that. And we'll do the same thing for the actual set. So let's do bar actual set and same thing. We just take the set divided by two. Cool. So now we have the actual values. Now in here we can handle the actual spawning. So now what we want to do is pretty much what it does here. We want to set up a physics raycast. So let me just have it auto finish. Let me remove this real quick. We'll get back to that. But so we want to do a physics raycast and what we essentially want to shoot it from our actual X and actual set and then shoot it just from the spawn height, which will mean from the very top of the box. So going back into Unity, we'll be spawning it from the height up here at the very top. And actually I realized this is not entirely correct because we want this added to our position. So let's do raycast position. And we want this to, to also be part of the transform.position plus the setup here. That's what we want to do. And then this is actually our raycast position. Now we want to shoot it the ray downwards, of course. We want to know what we've hit and where we've hit. The shoot distance then can actually be the spawn area here, dot y. But what I just realized as well is we probably want this divided by two as well. Just otherwise it'll be too tall. And yeah, okay, so this should do it. So now if we're inside this, we can actually just invert this to make it a little cleaner so we don't have to go as deep. And then we just continue. So that means if we do not hit anything, we continue through the loop and go to the next one and check that. And then last thing, what we have to do here is what happens when we actually spawn it. So let's do, uh, let's just call it random resource. Essentially, we'll get the resource prefabs. We'll do a unity engine random dot range between zero and however many resources there is in here. Um, we could also quickly just add a safety check up here. So if resource prefabs dot count is less than or equal to zero, then we just return just to make sure there's never no resource to be spawned. Um, and then we want to actually instantiate it. So let's do instantiate and we just instantiate the random resource. And of course, we now want to do it at the position that we've hit. So we want to do hit dot point and we just quaternion dot let's do Euler and then let's just uh, randomize the rotation. So let's do zero dot random dot range. Oops, that would be unity engine dot random dot range and between zero and 90, I guess would be pretty much a random rotation and then zero again. And we could also just for good measure, maybe make it a child of not this, but of transform just to keep the hierarchy clean. Uh, remove these again, that got auto added. And yeah, so that's basically it. And now the last thing that we want to do is of course, we want to use the actual spawn rate to check if, you know, should it actually be spawning something or not. And the way that we do that is we can say if unity engine dot random dot range between zero and 100 is greater than the spawn rate, then we'll just continue again. So we don't want to continue in that case. And now something just has to call the spawn resources. What we can do is we can just have the on spawn method with the bool inside and we can say if bool as server, then we want to call the spawn resources. And I think that should mostly be it. This should pretty much work now. So let's go and give it a try. Let's try this. I should have my trees somewhere as well. So if I go to environment, trees, yeah, I have these as prefabs. So I think these are all the prefabs in here. Um, oh, but of course they don't have the world resource on them. So let's do that. We just make them actual prefabs. Let's make a new folder resources. And let me unprefab these real quick. Unpack and then let me prefab them correctly. So like so into the resources folder. And now I have the various trees. Now going into the resource spawner, I can now add all of these to the resource prefabs list. We go into the resource spawner and I think everything should be good now. So if I just quickly hit save and I now hit play, whoops. Hold on, let me also just remove the existing trees because we don't want them now. Now let me hit play. And as you can see, now we have a whole forest. Obviously it's a little densely populated, but as you can see, they stand correctly on the ground, they're randomly rotated, and it's a very dense forest. So we can turn that down a little bit. So going into the resource spawner, we can, for example, set the spawn rate to maybe half. We can also make the spawn distance a little higher. That should already greatly decrease in here. Now we have a little forest set up. Oh, and you can see, oh, they can hit each other, of course, because the tree is also on the default layer. So we have to, of course, fix that. Um, let's just make a resources layer and let's add the resources to this new layer. 
There we go. So now it shouldn't happen that the trees can actually spawn on top of each other. Like right here, it probably would have happened. But in this case, it didn't. And there you go. Now you should see that this works. We can take this on here and we can actually go and hit resources. And as you can see, we can hit multiple at the same time. We hit it right. All right. So here we have the forest. And then let me go ahead and have the other client join in. All right. And here we are. Here's the other client. And as you can see, he also has the whole forest now. Same forest, obviously, because all the trees are in the same position. And yeah, it's really as easy as that. So I hope that was helpful to you. Also, as a quick mention, I quickly also just fixed up some things in the player controller. Uh, I'll play movement, sorry. Very simple stuff. But for example, in the handle rotation, I just make sure that there actually is a camera. And same in the handle movement, I just make sure there actually is a character controller. Because sometimes the update loop can actually run before the unspawn has been called. And so we just want to essentially safeguard the things that we use in here that we get in the unspawned. Uh, they are indeed um, ready. We could also always just put this line of code into awake or something instead. That could work fine as well. Just wanted to mention it. Other than that, I hope that this was helpful to you. I hope you learned something new and I hope you're happy with your new little forest setup that you're able to do. I think this is a pretty clean little simple setup. Works pretty well and now we have a nice little forest. I hope to see you in the next one. I hope this was helpful. Please do remember to leave a like, comment and subscribe. I just wish you a wonderful day and that you keep living the dream.